So we were talking about fights. And there was a fight in Detroit Lions training camp between two rookies. Receiver Amon Ra St. Brown. The second name. Uh, T, can you help me with that one? Infantu Melafanu? Uh, Iffy. Iffy. Just call him Iffy. Iffy. Iffy, 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 Iffy can't you see. Um, Dan Campbell had a reaction to it. And I would like to get your take on this. Uh, he said... Art, may you read this for me? It's exactly what he said. Yeah, uh, uh, Dan Campbell said that it's nothing wrong with a few heated battles on the field when referencing the St. Brown uh, scuffle. Said it becomes a problem when it is a team brawls all practice long and that you get better with players pushing each other to their limits. That's from Corey Woods from the press conference of Dan Campbell the other day. I like when young fellas thump. Yeah. Because I think in this situation, both of these guys are trying to ascend up a ladder they're rookies they've been told they're nothings by veteran players and so they're trying to establish themselves so they fight and i'm good with it no absolutely we kind of spoke this a little bit yesterday like it's that's competition you know what i'm saying that, that shows you they're hungry and they, they want to win they want to be that guy they want to they want to prove to you that they could be a piece of this team and i i love it you know what I'm saying and the, the both rookies yeah, I, I think this has some merit to it. Now, some fights are just, I'm just pissed off and it's hot. Yeah. There's no other reason, but I want to beat your ass. Yeah, and I, and I listened to that press conference yesterday, too, and Dan Campbell actually said that they had, a, uh, they had another rep after that. It was competitive and clean. There wasn't any, like, you know, scruffle or fights after that. And, right. I mean, that's what you want. To me, when I look at that stuff, it, if it's a brawl, like with a team, you know what I'm saying, and people are, aren't caring about, the safety of others, because stuff happens in brawls. I, th- I think New York Giants just had Daniel Jones at the bottom of a, a, a scruffle. That's their starting quarterback. Mm-hmm. That means your coach doesn't really have, uh, I guess, control of what the situation, what's going on in a, in a brawl situation. One on one, this competition, right? And plus, and the other thing is, I'm trying to show you I'm better than you. Exactly. Right. So, if I beat your ass. Then you got that swagger the rest of the practice, the rest of the preseason, the rest of the regular season. So when you line up, they're like, okay, yeah, uh, you might be pretty good, but I beat your ass last week. <laughs> yeah. So what you got to say? Exactly. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a man thing. Yes. And uh, you're trying to establish uh, a, a base. Yeah. And... I'm better than you. I'm better than you. Oh, this motherfucker beat my ass last week. Let me let me <laughs> chill out with this dude. So you trying to you you're trying to establish something? Yeah. Because he, you are you are when you're a rookie, you're a nothing. I don't care who you are. They vets look down on you. Um, they make you do silly stuff, and you got to do it pretty much. Yeah. No, you're right. Cause I I believe they had Herman Moore on the hook did uh, Maz and those guys, and they asked him, you know, which one of these rookies. Our, our receivers are standing out to you. He said, none of them, because they're rookies. They, right. they still have to prove themselves. And exactly as you said, like they're, you're nothing. You, you gotta, and when you have that fight, it shows that you're not going to let people just step over you and, and dominate you all practice, stuff like that. It's like, and you make, it may not be for good reasons, maybe, if the coach doesn't like it. Dan Campbell obviously said he fired him up. He liked it, but your coach also remembers that guy, I'm saying, from the, the he fight does situation. That. And I'm kind of wondering if the Dan Campbell mentality is filtering down to this team. Because, you know, it seems like they've had a couple, br- not brawls, but fights and people getting spicy. And that's the way he is. Yeah, exactly. And I see this, the comments been going on. I, I didn't I address it with you as soon as I walked in, but uh, definitely got to rock the teal today. Yeah, you know what? I was going to try to ignore that <laughs> the rest of the show. I, I said, this dude is calculating. You know, yesterday it was like, hi, Mr. T. I really like you and everything. And now you wear this jersey, man. <laughs> Throw it up in my face. I, I, it's fire. Literally <laughs> fire. It's on my chest. No, but I, I, I agree. I, I think Dan Campbell's, uh, you know, putting his culture, his, his toughness. I and honestly, God, when I think about the Detroit Lions teams that I rooted for in my lifetime, my favorite one was Jim Schwartz because they were kind of that same way. They're kind of like, I think we talked about it yesterday. Yeah. We're going to punch you in the mouth. You they, they, know they you were, played the Lions. The only problem with Jim Schwartz is he would melt down. Yes. And when he melted down, the team melted down. Yeah. And they would do stupid things. He didn't know when to throw a challenge flag. And so he, that's why I think Dan Campbell talked about, yeah, I like the fire. I like the spirit. But you've got to control it. Some way, somehow, it can't. 
It can't turn into a, a all out brawl. And you're not thinking. You just want to beat somebody's ass and you don't know why you want to do it. You exactly. can't, can't get to that. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like a brawl, that's where I'd be worried. Because then that shows he does not have control of his team. Now, the fact that it was just a one on one and it didn't escalate to that, because these are young guys too. Like, these aren't the, they say, you know, the older you are, the more level headed and mature you get, which is the case. I'm not going to pretend like it's not in most scenarios. But, like, the fact that he has them under control. You know, this early on, like, they haven't even seen a preseason game yet. There's only been seven days worth of camp. I guess it's a rookie camp, too. But, like, they obviously respect Dan Campbell. It's everything this man says, even in his press conferences, he's talking about hitting harder on certain days and taking the pads off the next day. I'm not, I'm not second-guessing it because he played the game. Not only is he coaching and was put in charge, but he knows he's been through those practices. He knows that third day, maybe because he's talking about taking the pads off today and just doing, like, walkthroughs. And, and I... I respect it because, like I said, he's been through it as a player. He knows, oh, third day, your body's probably a little bit more sore than usual. Right. These guys might and, like this And I think he understands, like, fans want you to kick their ass every day. Sean, you know, players. Sean, yeah. who's boss? And, but you, that doesn't work. Hell no. Uh, you got you to gotta have popsicle breaks now and there, or just lay off of them for a little bit because um, they are human beings. You can't withstand punishment every day. That's why some days, you know, you have walkthroughs. Yeah. And, yeah, and not only are they human beings, the human beings with dollar signs attached to them. You know what I'm saying? Your franchise right. is paying these guys millions of dollars. This guy's out for the season just because you wanted to, you know what I'm saying, make them butt heads all day in practice. Now you look like the jackass. Right. There was a coach at Tampa, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Ray Perkins. He was a guy, I'm going to show you who's boss. We're going to be the toughest team. In the middle of the Florida heat, where it's 98, 98 degrees, this fool used to have three a days. His thing, his thinking is, okay, everybody in the NFL might be doing two a days. I'm gonna do three a days, and my guys are gonna be tougher than everybody else. Guess what? About the seventh, eighth game of the season, their legs ran out. They were done, and uh, they couldn't su- sustain that uh, because he he wore them out. Uh, and plus, they're pissed off. I don't want to practice three times a day. Uh, the mind can only take so much. It's like, fuck it, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. You do it. I'm glad that story ended that way. I was hoping he didn't win any type of championship. Cause no, he did. That's, that's when Tampa up. was really bad. Yeah. And plus, before Perkins, uh, coach, he was at Alabama. He was the Alabama coach. I think he took, took over shortly after Bear Bryant. So he just thought he was this badass. But he had to learn a lesson. Yeah. And I don't remember if it was Darius Slayer or Glover Quinn. But uh, fortunately, he was able to speak to both of them. And they said, like, when it gets – because we were talking about Matt Patricia and his practices. And he would do stuff like that. He would have you running suicides and, you know, all kinds of conditioning drills and stuff like that, which I make – get in shape, yes. But as, like, punishment or to, like, make them better, these guys are in the NFL for a reason. They have that aggression. They know how to tackle. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're at the, the cream of the crop. They know what the hell they're doing at that, t- and then that his, standpoint. I, I think his biggest mistake wasn't working them hard. His biggest mistake was not explaining his team why he did that. They didn't yes. understand why, we, why we're doing these ungodly practices. And, but you have to explain. You know, it, it's like a, a corporate setting. You might be the CEO and you may have ideas, but you run it by other people. Yeah. And then you explain why you want to do this, what your goal is. And so he didn't do that. He's just, I'm a hard ass. You're going to do it because I want you to do it. That's not good enough. Definitely not good enough. As a subordinate who has leadership, I've looked leadership in the face and, and like, I, I have, I've lived this. This is my second life, Terry. I, I don't take a lot more bullshit too much anymore. So like, I've looked leadership in, in the face and like that's some bullshit. Like, yeah, I need a why. You know say if you like you say if you want me to bust my right. ass or you want me to do something that I think may be a waste of time, give me a reason why. Like, make it make sense for me. I'm mean, mm-hmm. I'm saying D Max chair. That's something he always says. Mm-hmm. It's all about the why and the culture. Right. You know, but it's true. And you might think it's stupid, but they explain yeah. to you like, oh, I never thought about that. That's not a bad idea. Exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm more willing to participate in whatever they, they want us to do. Facts. It's like that, that home, homeless man getting stomped out. Now, it looks, that looks fucked up. But if those guys would tell you, hey, this guy raped my sister, my little kid's sister, then 
There's a why yeah, there. There's a difference, right? You know what I'm saying? The the why is always important, man. It's it's always important. Um, is there? Because I seen the comment. I think it was Chad. He said that uh, Dan Campbell's a combination of Schwartz and and Caldwell. Is that? I think it's a little bit more. What's your, what's your take on that? That's a very hard combination. But I think what he's trying to say is he has the fire that Schwartz have, but he's also trying to identify with the players. He's trying, he, you know, he, he understands what they're going through. So I, I think if we got to see all practices, all meetings and everything, we would see a softer, quieter side of Dan Campbell um, where he's not, up here all the time. He's not yeah. uh, got his four shots of espresso in him all the time. <laughs> you you have to um, you have to go by different different speeds. Yeah, you can't go all out all the time. And I and I'm sure that's what the texture is saying. I, I'm sure that's how Dan Campbell handles it. Yeah, that's it. That kind of point with it. And we'll carry this one on as, as well as some other conversations about all the uh, young Lions players after this brief break but let me tell you about my bookie question mark mybookie.ag where you can go and capitalize on all the underdog bets for the Detroit Lions this year just make sure you use promo code Woodward to match your deposit up to 50% at mybookie.ag Tony is a third generation logger that has a simple practical approach to life and work that's why his Coast DX342 knife is perfect for him the stainless steel blade is rust resistant and made for all weather use. And the double roll lock safety ensures that it will never inadvertently close when he doesn't want it to. That's why Coast is trusted tough. 